<laughs> so my guest today is Joey Drolshake. He's the founder of IFGT Life Coaching, author of Life's Lessons, and the creator of his innovative subconscious mindset training process. He's had a 28-year career, a successful one, where he made it up the VP of Sales, received multiple certifications and decades of coaching others in the way of his experience, and he specializes in leading people to creating successful careers, financial freedom, and doing what they love. Joey, how the heck are you? Oh, I'm doing so good, Jeff, and I'm so excited to be here with you and have this conversation we're about to have. I've been really looking forward to this, and we know it got postponed a couple of times, and it's been, so this is like the excitement has been building. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. So you told me right before we started that successful 28-year career, it really wasn't what you were gunning for when you got into corporate and that you want to get out of it at some point. Um, I'm just curious, what happened that made you get to a point where you said to yourself, I want the hell out of this? So I started my career at like 21 years old. I started in the automotive industry. I grew up in Detroit, Michigan, so it was there. And, and it's moved and progressed throughout up to a vice president of sales. I, I actually specialized in building territories and then helping companies that were either in or going into bankruptcy to get back into profitability. And I was really good at what I did but I couldn't stand what I did. I wanted to do this. I wanted to have a direct impact on individuals' lives from the time I was 22. But I was what I ended up finding out through the process that became SMT, subconscious mindset training, is it was my conditioning. I was conditioned my whole life that a man gets a job, supports a family, and hopefully lives long enough to enjoy some retirement. And that conditioning is what held me stuck to that position, to that paycheck, you know? And then, and then eventually, like a lot of people experience, Experience, it became like a trap because as my income went up, as the benefits of the positions went up, it seemed, it seemed more and more impossible to break away from that to do what I want to do. So it was, yeah, I was really good at what, and you know, even like I said, I was really good at what I did. So it, it tricked my mind. And I kept thinking, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Even though my passion is over here, this is what I'm supposed to be doing because if I wasn't, I wouldn't be as good at it as I am. It's so funny. And, what you're describing is something that I talk about in my coaching. Uh, we're trained to get on the conveyor belt. And from the time we're very young, you know, we're told, mm -hmm. you know, what's the purpose of school? Shut up, do what we tell you to do, regurgitate a bunch of facts when we tell you to, to do that. And uh, the, the threat that they give you is, or else you won't get into a good college. And then you get into the good college, and the same thing happens all over again with a threat being you won't get a good job. And then you get trapped. You're on the conveyor Absolutely. Belt. Absolutely. And then you start building, you start building the family, right? And you get the house and you start getting those things. And, and I'll tell you, I've had employers who would want, they would try to convince me to build a house where I was at, like in Iowa or Wisconsin or, you know, wherever, and to build a house and to do this. And, and it's just because it locks you in even more, right? Because yeah. now you have more obligations. So you need more of that paycheck to keep things going. And it, it really is that trap, you know? And thus... You know, folks, we're going to be talking about, you know, getting rid of that stinking thinking, adjusting your mindset uh, in order to get ready for the search more than anything. Because so often people feel stuck, trapped, depressed, a whole host of different things in the course of their career. And now they have to go out and find something else. And how do you switch gears? So this is what we're going to be talking about. So yeah. that's right going along on. those yeah, right along those lines, Jeff, is, is you know, a, a job search or, or transitioning from a job to a business or wh whatever that passion is, whatever that desire is, it starts before you start writing resumes and practicing interviews and, and, and looking through, you know, I was going to say papers, but that would just show my age, <laughs> online at job postings and things like that. You know, it starts way before that. It starts with getting into alignment, getting the mindset straight and getting those, that conditioning and patterns that are keeping you stuck in that position you're in now realigned and shifted so that you can go into that next thing with power. Here, one of the things I tell every one of my clients I work with, I, I don't write resumes. I don't practice interviewing. I, I don't do things like that. What I help the person do is shift that conditioning within and go from taking massive actions 
to living off of inspired actions, which show up easily for us. When somebody, when that clicks in with somebody, writing a resume, interviewing, like that's all second nature. It's built within us, but we have to tap into that place before we do that. And Does that make sense? Write, even if we don't write resumes, you can always hire someone to do it. And you can always take a you're, course. It's no big deal. You know, right. You're absolutely is, right. When, when firms hire, they're looking for you know, competence. There's a lot of people who are competent, but they want to get self-confidence, character, chemistry, maybe a little bit of charisma. They certainly want to see someone who cares because they want to trust someone. And if you don't have, if you're like everyone else, how can they choose you? Absolutely. And, and I'll tell you, I've never met anybody yet who is stuck in a job they can't stand, who's dragging themselves to work, who, you know, like me, couldn't stand the weekends because they live in dread of Mondays. You know, I've never met anybody who's in that place who has who has a, an overwhelming amount of confidence in themselves. Right. It's gotten beaten out of them. You're right. It's there, but it's been covered over with the other things. It's been covered over by perceived failures from the past. And, and you know, other times they've tried it and they've heard of somebody who's tried it and went for a better job or something and it didn't work out for them. Or they hear those and that becomes their truth that they live by. You know, one of the things I tell everybody is, is that the reality of our life is make-believe. It's not real because our entire life is based on our perceptions. So the good news, Jeff, is at any time you can look at your perceptions and shift those and it can have a different experience in your outer surroundings of your life. So let's look at it from you know, average Jane or Joe. And right. you know, they've been in a career for 15, 25 years, however long it's been. And they realize, okay, I got to move on. And they've had the crap beat now for so long. They've got what I refer to in the old Zig Ziglar quote is a case of stinking thinking. Yeah. And I love that. How do you begin to shift that? When you're working with someone, how do you shift that attitude so they can come back to their genius and their passion again? Yeah, the, and that, that's a great thing. I think of thinking, like that's a great way to describe that. And, and typically what happens with people in that condition right there, is they're living based on the false perceptions within them that's holding them back and keeping them trapped and doing all of that stuff and everything. One of the first things I do, I just talked to somebody the other day. I offer a 10 minute call. I'll offer it as a, as a gift to your, you know, to your listeners and your audience as well. But I, um, I, I was on a 10 minute call with somebody and they just would not look at that inside you know, side of things. They wanted to blame their situation, their circumstances, their, you know, their, their conditions. They wanted to blame everything outside of them for why they were stuck in where they're at. One of the first things of anybody I can help. And, and what I do isn't necessarily for those who need it. It's for those who want it. But one of the first things I do is get people into that, help them. And I have tools to do this throughout the, the entire, you know, 12 step you know, uh, subconscious mindset training that I do and such, but it's helping them get into that beginner mindset. So it's helping them look at like even things like past failures, instead of failures, shift those and look at what you learned out of that. So take it and convert it from, from a failure to a life lesson, which becomes then a stepping stone. As we start going through that, as I start helping people get from that mode of what they know, because we've all been taught, like you said, that conveyor belt, we've all been taught that you have to know the answer. You have to know the right answer. You have to know, you know, all this stuff and everything. Life, we don't grow through that, though. So what I do is help people move from under, you know, that beginner mindset of going from what they already know to what can they add to what they already know. Yeah, I learned, right? I learned when I made that mistake, I was a loser. That's what I learned. And I. I'm, I'm trying to save everyone some time because I know that's the joke you told yourself. So let's just cut yes. through that and yes, and start shifting that mindset. Yeah. How does someone yeah, because who's been learned to beat themselves up so regularly? Wow. Yeah, that's really powerful, right there. And that's what it is: is we use 
life's events in the past to to really unknowingly too unknowingly nobody does this intentionally but unknowingly we've learned to use those things to hold ourselves back to minimize how powerful we, you know um uh, Marianne Williamson and I never say it the right way but she has a quote I absolutely love and she said we're not afraid of being powerless our real fear is how incredibly powerful we really are. Yeah. And so when I take somebody and give them in that beginner mindset, and then right from there, and this is whether I'm working with an individual organization, corporation at all levels, I've helped two organizations go from a place of bankruptcy back into profitability doing this. So it's been, I've proved it out there along with hundreds of clients is when we create a dynamic vision for that life we want. I have dynamic vision road mapping that takes people through it. And it's not just their career or their job or their financial. It covers all areas of life. And when we get that, can you imagine the power boost in confidence and excitement that you have towards life to open up possibilities like that, that you can even just see in writing in front of you? It makes a huge difference. But how do we start the shift? What are the steps that someone goes through in making yeah, so the shift? Yeah. So when we, so, so, I mean, it, you know, it's multiple areas and stuff, but as we start going through this, when we get that beginner mindset and we become open to what can be rather than what we see in our perceptions of things, and then we create a dynamic vision for what it is, where we want to, what we want to achieve. Then the rest of the process is I just help that person go through. And, and so often we have goals and we want to go out there and we want to make those things happen. What I work with people on is coming from the place of that vision. So it's clearing the pathway of the patterns and the conditions and the paradigms that people live by, shifting those, which can be done with ease. And as we shift them, more starts opening up. I've had clients who have, who have gone from like really, really struggling financially to just opportunities showing up in their life. When you hear things of the law of attraction and the secret and everything else, it works perfectly. But I think one of the places where it's been um, kind of handicapped in its delivery is the law of attraction works and it works perfectly for everyone. But the application of how we do that is what is as unique as the individual applying it. So Some you would have different that. conditioning than I have, right? So but understanding that conditioning needs to be identified and shifted. It doesn't matter then at that point what the conditioning is. It's the whole process is in the shifting of that conditioning to open things up. Does so that make I'll sense? Use, yeah, and I'll use myself as an example so you yeah. can work on me for a little bit. Let's do that. Because my parents uh, grew up in World War II times and met in Siberia where my father was a former soldier for the Polish army and exile there. And my mother and her family left Germany and got sent to Siberia. They met under terrible circumstances. I caught that wow. <laughs> and as such, they learned to trust no one. As a matter of fact, one of the family stories was that my grandfather was a fairly well-to-do uh, thread salesman in Germany and accumulated some money that eventually became worthless. And they took possessions with them to bribe people, one of whom was the uh, head of the camp that they were in, in Siberia. And the last, and, and the goal was to get everyone in the family to have indoor jobs so that they could didn't have to work outdoors in Siberia winter. And the last thing they had to give was a watch. And one day there's a new head of the camp there. And my grandfather asked, what happened to the last guy? He developed bourgeois values. We saw this watch he had and um, we had to replace him. Well, the bribe came back to bite them, this guy. And now they're in Siberia, trapped there. As such, as a family, we all learned not to trust anyone. Mm. And thus, if you're working with someone like me, and folks, this is not rehearsed. As you noticed on Joey's face, he was. there were a lot of wows he was giving me. 
It's a, a very simple story. I know the lesson I was being taught. I'm very conscious of it. But if you were working with someone untrusting because they were in sales and people tr- stole revenue from them, they're always reorgs, they cut back on their territory. How do you shift the mindset from that case of, okay, I'm getting screwed, if you use a, a blunt word, to, okay, now I can have a new opportunity and start fresh. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and understanding where that, like understanding, not so, so much where it's coming from even, because what I tell people is it doesn't matter where you've been or what you've been through. All that matters is where are you right now? What, where are you exactly right now? Do, you know, if you don't trust people today, understanding where it comes from, but where are you right now and where do you want to be? And now for those two reference points, I can help anyone. So when we look at that and we look at that conditioning and you understand what it is, and I'm sure you understand how it impacts your life, right? Mm-hmm. And where it plays out. You're more, the more aware of it we become, the more of that. And that's what I help my clients get to the point of what you're seeing with that, Jeff. And then what we can do is we can take those circumstances and situations and walk through those and start making that shift. In other words, like, um, like if somebody wants to quit, if I meet somebody and they want to quit smoking, okay? <clears throat> so often people want to put the cigarettes down and just be done, right? But what happens is if we don't put something positive in place of that, it will sneak its way back in. So the same thing with conditioning, you know, you can go through and change it. it, it like a situation happens and you talk about it and you go through and you, and you shift that and you understand it and then you can apply it. But if you don't put something else in its place, it will sneak its way back in there. So that's what I do it, is help clients to do is find, find opposite um, of conditioning to start putting in place of that. So instead of coming from a distrust, you start moving into opening up to be more trusting and start taking actions. You know, every decision we make has an action attached, but it, otherwise it's just mere entertainment, but taking actions into that in your life. And it can sound like a long, long, long process, but it, it actually isn't. As you start practicing it within, you know, I, my clients notice differences within weeks of us working together. And- I'm thinking for the job hunter, the classic thing that they complain about is, you know, I never get results from interviews. Mm. Interviews are hard. You know, the story gets believed and reinforced by constant repetition. And thus, you have to break the loop with something positive. Learn how to interview better. Because obviously, you don't do a good job. Otherwise, they'd hire you. Well, and, and the other thing, the other thing of that is so many people when they're looking for a new job, it's just, you know, people when it, when they when they feel forced or it's that time when they just can't stand it for another week, right? It's almost like they'll grasp almost anything rather than where they truly want to be. Look for that company, identify that company you truly want to be at, penetrate that company, get in there for the, you know, and, and, and things like that. That vision helps align that. Because then when things do start showing up that don't fit, you can say, no, thank you. And wait and move into that other side. When we do that, when we have that clarity of that vision, it opens the avenues up for it to show up easier for us than when we're just going, I I need a new job and just start looking through postings and things like that, trying to find something. So if I'm going to translate this for the audience, uh, what I'm hearing you say is, we have to substitute something for the old belief system that it becomes a new belief system. And that can involve skills development. I use the example of interviewing or some other belief system that gets reinforced and thus believed. So that for a while, it has to be a conscious shift because it's not a habit yet. And until it's a habit, the constant repetition and going, ah, oh, here's a chance for me to slip back. You know, it has to become the vocabulary for a little bit. Absolutely. And, and, and you know, like the, the way the whole process, the thinking process, the creation process, uh, you know, whatever you want to call it works is, is we have a conscious mind, right? So one of the very first things I'll start working with people on is like whenever I'm doing a, a live um, event or something, I always ask people, how many of you would ever speak to another person the way you talk to yourself. Ooh, that one's painful for people. People always, like a lot of times people will laugh and chuckle about that. And I get the humor in it, but it's so demeaning to the life that we desire to live 
and the way we talk to ourselves, you know? So one of the first things I start doing is having people become more aware of that and start shifting that because we have a conscious mind and the conscious mind is whatever we're focused on, the words we use, the thoughts we entertain, the people we hang out with, what we watch on TV, you know, if we're watching CNN, constant negative news all the time, that becomes ingrained. And then we have our subconscious mind. The subconscious mind doesn't determine what you want and don't want. It doesn't determine good or bad. It doesn't, all it does is absorbs whatever the conscious mind is focused on. And then it uses a body to carry out the actions to create those experiences. So can you see somebody that's stuck in, in, in their failures or stuck in hardship or stuck in life's a struggle or stuck in that? They're going to continue to see that more and more and more throughout their life. And things will get more so and more so strugglesome. When we start shifting that in the conscious mind, we're giving the subconscious mind something else to focus on, something different to focus on, and we can experience different results. There's a few things, a couple things at least in this that hang up a lot of people though. First off, the subconscious mindset is where the shifting has to take place ultimately to create permanent change in life. We can go around talking positive stuff all the time, but if, we, if, if, if we're having the thoughts of failure, if we're having thoughts of limitation, if we're having thoughts of what we can't do or there's not the right job for us or whatever it is, Jeff, then that's really what the subconscious mind is focused on and what the, all the conditioning, that conditioning I had that a man gets a job and supports a family. You know, another example I have is I grew up outside of Detroit, Michigan. There were five of us kids and my mom and dad stayed married till death do apart, but they struggled my entire youth. They struggled financially. They worked like mega hours, both of them and stuff. And I saw what that did to their relationship, to what financially and, and things like that. And I remember at nine years old thinking, man, something's not right here. But even knowing that, I went into my adulthood struggling. And in my mid-20s, I realized if something came easy to me, it felt like it wasn't right, like I didn't earn it. You know, so, so taking that example and going in and understanding the conscious mind, understanding the words I started using and I started, you know, things with affirmations or things similar to that and stuff. And, and I started applying this stuff and I started using the tools that I teach today without even knowing what I was really doing then, just taking a book and experimenting and, you know, continuing to do that. But eventually what it did is it became ingrained in my subconscious conditioning that life, you know, life is easy. You know, my, my <clears throat> subconscious mindset conditioning for money is that there is so much financial abundance available that every living, breathing person could have more than they could ever use. And there'd still be an unlimited supply that money literally grows on trees. Now, the whole time growing up, I was taught, what do you think? Money grows on trees? Now, we got to get back to job hunters. I want to get yeah, that yeah, one yeah. specific. So yeah. we've, we've got the job hunter and they've just spent, Two years, six months, 20 years uh, in a job that's kind of worn them down. How do we start shifting their mindset so they look like the winners that they've always want to be uh, and arrive in that new job with the glorious halo around them that the new employer goes, oh, this person's my dream person. They're the ones I've always wanted because behaviorally they shifted. So I'm curious what uh, which of your tools you might use to shift someone who's kind of defeated into back into being the winner yeah the, and the first thing i'll say there is is the clients i work with you know you had mentioned that about the employer says you know this is the person i've always dreamed of and you know things like that and so i work from the person that i'm working with standpoint yes. that they're saying man this is a job i've always dreamed of i love this i can't wait till monday i love going to work i love the impact you know all of it like and so i work from that side and really the way to do that is to align to get a lot of clarity around a vision of what that life looks like. What is the job? What's it feel like? To, it's, you know, most days, Jeff, I get up before my alarm goes off and it's like, I'll try and lay in bed. And it's like, no, I want to get going. And I have this excitement and this drive toward living life, you know, getting into that place. What does that look like for somebody, you know? And, and, and how do they get up in the morning? What do they do with their time? What's work like? And then how does that work, that job, that income afford them to go to, you know, live in, in, in time and money freedom, get to go where they want to go. What do those things look like and get clarity around the vision of what that life 
looks like, full encompassing relationships, health and well-being, like all of it. Once you have that, then you at least have a reference point to keep going back to, which as you focus more on that, the, can you see where the, some of the limiting thoughts that are holding people back will start fading away and they'll get more and more and more excitement into this vision here. So I'm going to play the devil's advocate because I'm good at that one. Uh, and the devil's advocate is, okay, um, I want a good job where people kind of like me and I like going into work in the morning. And they are people who, because the life has been beaten out of them for so long, doesn't have the same juice that you and I have. So how do they reach cultivate the juice, the energy, yeah. the passion? And this isn't about, I just want to be clear, folks. This isn't about whether you're an introvert. You can still have the juice. It's just demonstrated differently. So how do you have bring back that internal feeling so that they can walk in with that confidence and recognize what it is they want in that next organization so they can screen against it for themselves. Now, now this is part of the thing, the difference of, of going it alone versus having somebody who's got the experience assisting you with it, right? Because like, I'm going to tell you, there's a process to it, but my, my clients go through the process within a week and a half to two weeks. We're doing it alone. You know, somebody that's in the place you're talking about, when they first sit down to write a vision, it's not going to be their most powerful vision. Right. And people that are stuck in that place that you're describing, trying to go it alone, you know, it's like I tell people a lot of times is, is it, trying to go it alone is working through and with the same process that got you into living the life you're living right now. So that's a really big thing where having somebody, like I said, with the experience assisting you, because that's how you start identifying this stuff very quickly and start making the shifts. But it, it's got to start from a reference point of what do you truly desire? You know, and somebody who's in that place like you talked about there, Jeff, where, you know, kind of going to a job where I make good money and people kind of like me and you're coming from that place. That's not going to be your, your most exciting dynamic vision that you're creating, but it, you know, Attaboys go out because it's a starting point and will start moving you in that direction. So then a week later or two weeks later, whatever it is, you write a new vision out. You know, and one of the things I tell my clients and every one of them is I have points throughout the program where we go back to the vision. And the reason being is our vision of our life is as alive as we are. So if we're breathing, our vision is alive and it changes as we change. So somebody that's starting at that point and writes a vision that helps them to start seeing at least there's something else different. All of a sudden, within a certain time period, depending if you're going alone or not and how long that takes, but going through that process, then it starts opening up more. And when, because we're putting our focus on it, it starts opening up more and it starts opening up. More. And it, eventually you get to a point now, I couldn't do it alone by myself because I didn't know some of the conditioning and stuff I was running into. So I, I, I can't speak from that side. I've had coaching and things like that and stuff. But going, you know, even going through that process, like what we're talking about right now, it will still start opening that up. Right. And I agree with you wholeheartedly. Folks, if you've watched me or listened to me for any length of time, you know I'm a coach and I believe in coaching. And if we could do it by ourselves, We've tried doing it by ourselves. And the fact that you watch videos and listen to podcasts to try and figure it out on your, on your own, it's a lot faster if you just hire someone to guide you, to be your ally, who's done this before for other people so that you don't have to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, shouldn't, you shouldn't have to work so hard. Someone else already has the answers. So get that support from someone else, especially when it's a mindset shift. Because as I illustrated early, earlier, most people, when they start this mindset shift, they come to a place of equal mediocrity, equal average, because they're afraid of committing to the extreme, to joy again, to passion again, for fear it's going to, the hammer is going to come out and they're going to drive the nail back into the board. So you got to get some support to find this kind of stuff. And by the way, just so you know, we don't have infinite time. <laughs> okay. And okay. we've been doing great. 
And I just want to make sure we cover other points that are important. Okay. The audience. I would like to bring up something really, really quickly about what you Good. just said. Okay. Oh. What every client I work with, I tell them my goal is to get you to where you don't need my coaching anymore to where you've grown above what my coaching can offer you that that's my goal. So coaching isn't like a, a lifetime one coach, you know, multiple years building retirement or whatever off of and things like that. It should be a process that helps you get to where you want to get to and then move forward from there and enjoy being there. You know, that's that's one area. The other area is, you know, it, it's very similar to climbing Everest. Right. People can go out to Everest and they can, you know, register and they can climb to the top and maybe make it to the peak and, you know, and, and things like that to the crest of it and such. But how much easier would it be having a guide of somebody who's been through the train, somebody that knows what to look out for weather wise and, you know, all of that stuff. That's really what good coaching is. And the other thing I want to say on that, Jeff, is I tell every one of my clients, I don't have your answers. Your life is not my life. You following my steps and, and what the, the exact things that I've done. You know, which is a misconception, I think, a lot in coaching right now is, you know, you following my steps is not going to get you my outcome. You know, what it is, is I help people. I'm really good at helping people act, find and access those answers within them through taking inspired actions to lead to the life that they desire, not the life I'm living. And thus, folks, what Joey is saying, and he said it multiple times here, is it's smart to bring on to help guide you through this process, to be someone who works with you to help you get the results that you want. And most of the time, you're not even sure what those results are when you start out. And a good coach is going to help flush that out of you and then bring you on the path toward getting to where you want to get to. What haven't we covered yet, Joey? I don't know. It has been a great conversation up until now. I um just anybody struggling out there, Jeff, really, like anybody that's struggling, that's in a job you can't stand and, and you're questioning whether more is available to you. The answer is always yes. If you're not absolutely loving your life in all areas, you know, there's there's places to grow within that. And all you have to do is have the desire to experience more than you're experiencing now. Amen, brother. How can people find out more about you and the work that you do, Joey? Yeah, they can catch me on, you know, Joey Drillshaken on any of my social media. But one of the things I offer to your audience here, Jeff, is anybody can go to coachwithjoey.com and schedule a free 10-minute call with me and just talk about what's going on, start opening up that possibility of what's possible for you, and then walk away with some inspired actions that you can start taking to move you in that direction. Now, 10 minutes isn't a long time, <laughs> but it's a, it is a good way to connect with that. And, and people can walk away with having some actions they can take to lead towards where they want to be. And spell your last name for them. I'm going to have in the show notes. But I just want them to hear it. Sure. It's, it's um, D is Delta, R-O-L-S-H-A-G-E-N. But like I said, the easiest way to get a hold of me, Jeff, is go to coachwithjoey.com and schedule a 10 minute call. Excellent. Joey, thank you. And folks, we'll be back soon with more. I'm Jeff Alpin, The Big Game Hunter. Hope you enjoyed today's show. If you're watching on YouTube, click the like button. If you're watching it on Amazon, you know, do the same thing. And if you're listening as, as a podcast or watching on YouTube, share it, leave a comment, click the like button, do something that lets people know it was worthwhile. And if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching with me, visit my website, thebiggamehunter.us. You can schedule time for a free discovery call, schedule time for coaching, you know, order uh, uh, classes I have available, courses, I should say. And the blog has like 11,000 posts in it, which you can watch, listen to, or read. that will help you find work more quickly, hire more effectively, manage and lead much better, as well as help you with different workplace-related issues. Lastly, connect with me on LinkedIn, linkedin.com forward slash IN forward slash The Big Game Hunter. I hope you have a terrific day, and most importantly, be great. Take care.